In my view, the pearl junk is the most elegant of all the junks and is distinguished by a high oval stern. Their name comes from their prime function to transport timber to Shanghai and the Le Yangtze from the forests of Fujian. This incredible photo shows how pearl timbers were bound to the sides of the junk in the form of floating rafts. I was inspired to build my model after viewing the superb example built by Keith Smith, and I could not have done it without the loan of junks and sampans of the Yangtze, from which this drawing is lifted. I am not going into too much detail, as I am sure Keith will present his model comprehensively at some point. With an eye to construction, my initial observations were four deck levels, an inverted three stern housing the rudder, and that a temporary former at the bow would be needed to hold the bow planks apart. Construction is plank on frame with one eighth thick balsa planking over thin ply formers, many of which are later removed. The hull is then given a coat of epoxy resin to the exterior. I use this as it can be sanded between coats. The slide shows the internal resin coating, which is a hard car repair type. I use fast glass, available from Halfords, as it sets in less than an hour. Beware if you get too much hardener into the mix, as setting can take place before you get it on the model. The resulting sandwich construction is lightweight and very strong. The slide shows that this vessel is very shallow draft and that there is only just enough height below the lower deck to install the winch servo offset against the keel. The winch is a high tech 785 HP capable of three and a half turns, but controlled by the transmitter to give the exact rotation required for sail travel. I have used these in several models it is a very powerful and reliable unit. The two main cells are operated by attachment to a continuous loop running from the servo around a pulley in the bow. The mizzen sail is set at an optimum angle. The cross beam supports are shown, which hold the keel tubes. For attachment of the sheets, I use a wound copper ring, which is spiraled onto the control line and then squeezed together. The sheet is then tied to it. It is pulled by an electrical connector stripped of its plastic cover. A fine slit cut in the body allows it to slip over the control cord and the screws tightened to clamp. I find this is the easiest way to allow fixing to a taut control line. It also eliminates any tangling of sheets below decks. The stern is an awkward construction. The slide shows the brass bearing for the rudder, which operates between the internal sides of the hull. A 1 16th ply under deck is in the process of being fitted. Now the controls are installed. This will be overplanked, as in the next slide, and I apologize I do not have any interim build photos. Uh, construction has moved on with bullocks installed. These are fitted on top of the deck, which whilst not correct, is a leak-free option, rather than having many cutouts to seal. The rails are a complicated affair, where the top rail run over another. I used one eighth inch square spruce to get the curvatures and fix the supports with an internal brass rod to give extra support. It also shows the very heavy whales. The painting for the stern was done on thin plastic card with artist's acrylic paint and glued in position. I found it quite impossible to work on the model itself. The illustration shows the Chinese yen bird, equivalent to our phoenix, standing on a rock, defying the stormy seas. There are three Chinese characters meaning permanent, profitable, and prosperous. The eight Chinese immortals are to prevent the junk from harm. I used wood stain on the hull, and I did not go for a completely uniform finish to try and get a weathered appearance. 
the final finish is a coat of matte varnish. This slide is a shot of the foresail showing sail construction. The battens are 1 16th ram in dowel, each made from two pieces lashed together. The sail is sewn to these at regular intervals. It's not easy to see in the photograph, but one rope per button holds the sail laterally with a continuous rope winding from the luff around the mast, which holds it fore and aft. It is quite a complicated sail to make, but the bonus is there is a complete absence of standing rigging. This slide shows the ballasting process taking place covertly in the bath. You can just see poking out from under the hull is the front edge of a lead pipe. Cords over the hull hold it in position and it can be slid fore and aft to get the trim required. This gives you an idea proportionally of how much keel will overhang the support rods fore and aft. I increased the weight as I was aiming for, about six pounds, uh, as it is easier to remove and add and some is always lost in the casting process. Presenting at our Bromley meetings, there were few comments of speculation that it was unlikely to sail well, if at all. Contrary to their misgivings, and some of my own, it performs very well, and here is a shot of the junk on its maiden voyage. It far exceeded my expectations. It is an extremely good model to sail, and it does not appear to have any vices. This is what makes it all work. Being very shallow in the draft, I have given it a very substantial fin to prevent the wind pushing it sideways in the water when reaching. I make these as loose covers by bending thin aluminium litho plate sheet around the suspension rods and fixing with a seam at the rear. The rudder extension, which is removable, gives very good control. The full size could lower their rudders by up to 11 feet to achieve the same result. This is my final slide and my favorite, showing the junk in its natural environment. After the sailing success of my pole junk, I thought I would build a second junk, but of a different type. I was attracted by the website on which there is a painting of a Taiwanese junk. The website describes in detail the design process of a reconstructed junk and contains a good set of drawings. There are also photos of a model built by a Mr. Seng, who was instrumental in the design of the reconstruction. In addition to this plan, there is also a set of lines. I have not shown them, but beware of drawings lifted from the internet. Several pages can be of a different scale, which I only detected in this case when I found things were not going to plan. The first job was to cut out a keel. This is complete with a false bow former to give the planking a landing, but will be removed later. The keel has already been drilled for two tubes to hold the ballast. The position is not absolutely critical as the keel will be constructed to provide trim fore and aft. This slide shows the interior of the hull looking aft. All the formers supporting the planking have been removed and strengthening pieces glued to the hull interior. This gives me the maximum amount of room for the installation of radio gear in what is an extremely shallow draft hull. It is the, in the process of being coated with hard fiberglass resin. A 1 16th thick plywood lower deck is fitted here over the deck beams. The planked hull shows the false bow form is still in position, although the hull has been given an exterior coat of epoxy fiberglass resin. Through the deck cutouts, you can see the rudder servo mounted under the poop deck. The aperture in the lower deck reveals the sail control servo. I've used a different control mechanism to the continuous loop in the pole jump. You can just see the push-pull ply operating arm bolted to the top of the servo. I had to use this method as there was insufficient height below the deck to install a winch servo. The decking has been laid, the hatches are in position 
and masting is the next job. The shelter gave me a problem. I think the original would have been of bamboo construction. I cut out formers and planked over to get the shape. They were then removed and thin ply facings glued on to preserve the structure. I covered the planking with tissue and cellulose dope and then painted in a bamboo color with a streaky finish to try to simulate the original. It is removable, held by four brass pins, as I may need to get to the rudder servo for later adjustments. The many railings are cut from 2.5 millimeter dowel and drilled for a brass pin to strengthen the fixing to the deck. Not exactly my best piece of work, as some are neither quite upright nor uniformly spaced. I decided to paint a yen bird on the stern, defying the storm, as seen on Mr. Seng's model. Here the model is approaching completion and ready for the sails. The slide also shows the very fine lines of the hull, which is going to be easily driven. I cut out paper templates for the sails and attached with masking tape. I then adjusted to get an exact size as it is not easy to alter a fully battened sail. These templates were then marked with the batten positions and used in the construction as plans. I used exactly the same technique as on my pole junk with 116th ramming dowels lashed together and sewn to the sail. The sails have been installed and this shot of the deck shows the peculiar single fluke anchors common on early junks. You can see my sheeting to the foresail, which is fixed on the starboard side and pulled through an eye on the boom to the servo. Not scale, but it does give half the travel compared to the main sheet as long as it, is, as it is positioned at half the distance from the mast as the main sheet. The two sails are then always parallel on any point of sailing for a given movement of the servo motor. No sail is shown on the mizzen mast. This is a shot showing the rather odd serrated flag on the mainmast. I make all my flags from very thin nylon as used by aircraft modelers and paint with artists acrylic paint. I produce on the computer a print of the flag and pin the nylon over. It is then possible to paint in the flag matching the color print underneath. They do come out a little stiff, but the advantage is there is no fraying when cut out, so no seaming is required. The original painting shows some very long pennants, which I have omitted, <laughs> as when sailing, I think they would get tangled up in the sails. So now we have maiden voyage sailing shots. You can just make out the shape of the keel in the clear water in this port side shot. The starboard slide shows the battens on the foresail. The battens are on different sides for the foresail and the main. This is the only shot I have of the decorated bow. All these shots are taken in very calm conditions. The only time I can get the model into position, hold both the transmitter and the camera and have time to frame and press the trigger before the position is lost. My last slide and my favourite ghosting shot showing the stern view. I think it makes a pretty sight on the water and it has certainly been an interesting project. It is also a pleasure to sail. Thank you.